the entrance antiphon. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Welcome here to St Mary's in Cannock. It's a bright, sunny day here in South Staffordshire. I hope the weather's good where you are, whether it's morning or evening. I know we've got people here from all over the United Kingdom and parts of Europe and all over the world indeed. And you're all very, very welcome to be with us today. We have a particular prayer focus today as we pray for the sick. And there are so many, uh, sadly, who we are having to pray for, but many rejoicings too in the recoveries and also the joy and knowledge of prayer which is taking place. And this Mass today is offered for the soul of Bob Simmons. May he rest in peace. Amen. So as we begin this Mass, which is a celebration of St Augustine of Canterbury, let's call to mind our sins. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by the mission of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury called the English people into the wondrous light of the Gospel, grant through his intercession, we pray, that faithful to that same Gospel proclaimed, we may strive to make known your truth and build up your church on the foundations he laid. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we have our readings from Scripture. As always, they are, have been prepared in advance by members of our parish family. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. It was our God who gave us the courage to proclaim his good news to you in the face of great opposition. We have not turned to preaching because we are deluded, only rather, or trying to deceive anyone. It was God who decided that we were fit to be entrusted with the good news. And when we are speaking, we are not trying to please men, but God, who can read our inmost thoughts. You know very well, and we can swear it before God, that never at any time have our speeches been simply flattery, or a cover for trying to get money. No, have we ever looked for any special honour from men either from you or anybody else, when we could have imposed ourselves on you with full weight as apostles of Christ. Instead, we were unassuming. Like a mother feeding and looking after her own children, we felt so devoted and protective towards you and had come to love you so much that we were eager to hand over to you not only the good news, but our whole lives as well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Go out, Go out to, to the whole, whole world, proclaim, proclaim the, the good, good news. news. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Acclaim him, all you peoples. Go, Go out, out to the, to the whole world, proclaim, proclaim the good news. news. Strong is his love for us. He is faithful forever. 
Go out to the whole world, proclaim the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the labourers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send labourers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer. For the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick, and say the kingdom of God is very near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Words from today's Gospel, Jesus says to his disciples that they should say to those they evangelize, those they go out to speak to about his message, that the kingdom of God is very near to you. Well, today we commemorate St. Augustine of Canterbury. He was a uh, abbot of a Roman monastery who was sent by Pope Gregory, the whatever number, I can't remember, I ought to know, but I don't, so you can catch me out on that, uh, Pope Gregory, uh, to evangelise England. Now, there were all, already uh, English, indeed British, uh, Christians here, uh, but they were in somewhat disparate groups and not linked to Rome, and of course there were many who were not Christians at that time. So he sent out a party, and there were several waves, and numbers of monks went out to preach the gospel. And one of their strategies was that they convinced the people that this new gospel that seemed so strange and different was not actually all that different at all. It was not, the message was something they already knew. Perhaps not entirely clearly, perhaps not in all its detail, but it made sense of the world in which they lived in. It brought together the values which they knew and already cherished. And when Christianity spread through Britain, the program was not to destroy, utterly wipe out, obliterate the old faith and practices entirely, but to see where Christ already dwelt in them. Temples and holy places, shrines were adapted to Christianity. Festivals accommodated to the Christian calendar. It's not a bad thing to remember today. Everyone knows and shares some very important core values, sometimes called human values, which are also very much Christian values and virtues. Honesty, forgiveness, contrition, integrity, compassion. They're all glimpses of the love of Christ. They're all intuitions that the kingdom is already near. And our intuition when those are people in need is to pray for them, to remember them. People will often say to us, I'll, I'll keep you in mind, I'll think about you, I won't forget you. They're sometimes embarrassed to say, I'll pray for you, but that's 
partly what they mean. And we remember people who are in need. I mean, today we're especially praying for the sick. There are very many of them. And each one, of course, is uh, an important individual, somebody who's dearly loved, somebody who many other people are concerned and indeed worry about. And we get petitions in the, uh, in the days during the week, of course, and people want to mention some of those first, which is really important. So uh, let's mention those first. Keith Davis from this parish who's sick in hospital at the moment. Brenda Curley, who's known to some of those who take part in these masses, who is in, has particular needs at this time. Claire, who's in intensive care after an eight-hour an eight emergency operation on her spine. We pray also for the families of those who are imprisoned and prevented from visiting their loved ones at this time, uh, from receiving visits from their loved ones uh, at this time because of the pandemic. We pray for Grace, who's lost her sister recently and her sister's soul. We pray for, pray for a nurse, the mother of a friend who died yesterday morning. We pray for Rico, who was uh, in very, very severely ill in Birmingham's Children's Hospital and is now making excellent progress, almost fully recovered and has gone home. Uh, we also remember uh, Fred Quinn, who has been also very poorly in hospital and has now returned home. We give great thanks for his continuing good health. We pray also for those who have departed this life, mentioned already the Sister of Grace. We pray for Bob Simmons, for whom this Mass is offered. And uh, we also uh, ask you to pray for Father David Duggan, who's a former priest of this parish. His funeral takes place on Friday. Of course, it's a private matter. Archbishop Bernard will preside at that. But he served this parish for many years, and we continue to pray for his soul. Alongside all those, of course, there are the sick who we remember and pray for, those who are sick with the virus, that they may make a full recovery, those in hospital receiving treatment, those who cannot receive visitors, which of course is most of them. May they know Christ's presence with them and feel our closeness in our prayers. And we remember in particular today, Hazel, who's in hospital, Emma, who's not well, Bill, who has advancing vascular dementia, Leo, who's in hospital undergoing treatment. Peter Thompson, who had a stroke uh, last week, and for his wife Monica. For Anne and Callum, who are not well. For Biddy, who's in hospital. For Angie, undergoing chemotherapy, making some progress, but still very much needs our prayers. Chris, who has lung cancer. For an elderly relative of a petitioner and the carer who are struggling at home. For Greg, uh, who's uh, been poorly, uh, is uh, receiving care at New Cross Hospital. For Sharon, who's very ill. For uh, Frank, recovering from cancer, cancer operation. For Richard, who's very sick and is in hospital still, I think. Peter, waiting to return to hospital soon for an operation. Bridget, in hospital, very poorly. Terry, who's waiting for a cancer operation. Leanne, who's pregnant, and husband Liam. Uh, Georgina, who's been self-isolating during pregnancy. We pray for John of St Thomas More Scouts, who's quite poorly. Pat, caring for her husband Tim and struggling uh, to cope during this time of isolation. Brenda, who's uh, gone into hospital. We pray, I think we've already mentioned her in our prayers, but Brenda very much in need of our prayers at this time. Uh, Emlyn, with, with back problems. Tony, waiting for an operation. Martha, who fell and has a suspected dislocated collarbone. Brendan, who's now in a care setting, and for his wife and daughter, who are so concerned about him. Sarah, a nurse, who's uh, uh, had, uh, been tested for the positive for the virus. Rosemary, waiting for an operation. Richard and Jess, who have the virus and have a three-year-old son. Anne, who's returned from hospital, but is still not well. Ruth, who's poorly with the virus. Tricia and Stephen, diagnosed with cancer, now awaiting surgery. Jane, who had an operation since the lockdown. Sandra, awaiting for an operation. Glyn, who's unwell. Gordon, and June, and Brian, who've all uh, not got perfect health. And we pray for uh, a long list of people who are connected with our parish, who are sick or housebound, who have been those who've been receiving communion, who have been constantly in our prayers both before and during the lockdown. Catherine Holloway, Mary Rowley, Stella Skillen, Winifred Haynes, 
Doris Crabb, Annette Mason, Joanne Jevons, Nicola McCulloch, Celia Herdis, Dee Fellows, Teresa Hadley, June Weatherby, Priyana Jacinta Fernando, Sarah Hughes, Gladys Chilomewski, Van der Slifka, Dan Lyonette, Mary Kirby, Nora Perry, Jerry Marriott, Maria Vaswavsky, Bernard Deakin, Iris Robertson, Jane Hinton, Doreen Pitcher, Teresa Webb, Sister Monica, Emily Pritchard, Anthony Lawless, Catherine, Katie Bruce, John and Josie Morris, Vincent Dockery, Hannah Newborough, Way Bishop, Audrey George, Jeff Tipping, Josie Riley, James, Helen, Lynn Causland, Pim Mohammed, Christine Green, and Jane Seal. And I should have mentioned at the beginning of our prayers also, amongst those we pray for who've departed this life, also a very long-standing member of this parish, uh, Mary Casey died yesterday. We pray for her and for all who mourn her loss, for Bob Simmons, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all the holy souls, and all those in their particular needs, and for the departed, we pray eternal rest. Grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant our supplication, we pray, Almighty God, that with these sacrificial offerings of your people, which we bring on the Feast of St. Augustine, you will graciously mingle the gifts of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From the festival of St. Augustine, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bob Simmons, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with Blessed John Sugar, with St. Augustine of Canterbury, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now, across time and space, let's greet one another in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion antiphon as the father loves me so i also love you remain in my love alleluia
And now I invite you to make your own act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Well, we come to the conclusion of this Mass now. I hope it's been a good start for your day, or an end to your day, if you're all the way over in Australia, as uh, some of our viewers are, viewers, participants, parishioners, whatever. I don't know the right word to use, but those who are here. And, uh, and, uh, and many blessings as we think and pray for those who are in need, and ask God's blessing upon all of us. And uh, remember that... Uh, Many of the things that, um, about our faith that some, sometimes people seem to find strange, novel, different, unusual, weird perhaps even, actually they're not very far away from the things and the values and the, uh, the, th uh, the commitments which they hold to be important to themselves. Uh, we're able to agree with so many things in our modern world as well as disagree with so many too. Let's not forget that. And some of the important values which we share, we share with everyone. And uh, we need to not lose sight of that too. Uh, so we'll ask God's blessing upon us now. And then we'll move to our uh, next mystery of the rosary. We're on the resurrection, I think, today. I don't want to get there. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, reflect on God's great love, the great hope of glory. And uh, the, the hope which we all share to be united with him one day and with those who we've said goodbye to in this life but we'll meet again in the life to come let us pray as we rejoice at the feast day of saint augustine we have received the pledge of eternal redemption O lord and we pray that it may be of help to us both now and for the life to come through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm sorry. We'll get, this right. we'll get this right now. Amen. No? That shouldn't have happened. We'll go to say, and that says the crucifixion, that's wrong, isn't it? Amen. I'm sorry, we seem to have the crucifixion, but we all, we, the, 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 the mystery we're going to meditate on is the, uh, the resurrection. So we will reflect on that, even though the picture's still the crucifixion. I do apologise, that's a, what they call a computer error. In other words, my fault. So we, we, uh, our mystery now, which we reflect upon, is the first of the glorious mysteries, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who has been crucified is resurrected to new life. Uh, readings from the Gospel according to St. Luke. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices which they prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Grazie a te, non ti va bene, grazie a te, grazie a te, grazie a te, grazie a te, grazie a te. Santa Maria, in hand casa Dios, i campo un abbing un ama casa sana, caro nox a obra sa abbing camatai. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in his now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in moleribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesu. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc e in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among the women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Now we have uh, the prayer for the, uh, which the Holy Father has asked us to, uh, to say at the end of the Rosary during this month of May 2020, during the time of the pandemic. O oh Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus' suffering and persevered in your faith. Protect us of the Roman people, you know our needs and we know that you'll provide so that as at Cana in Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering and burdened himself with our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen.